who was keen to carry out the orders of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. He told those who objected to the expedition, "Who am I to stop the army that the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam had ordered to proceed? Even if I was snatched by animals, I will send this army." He gave his orders to the army to proceed and advised them to be true Muslims. Do not kill a child, an aged man or a woman. Do not cut trees or slay livestock except for your real need. Do not bring harm to any monks. Now march forward in the name of Allah. had placed fear in the hearts of Romans and apostates alike. They saw that in spite of the death of the Prophet ﷺ, the Islamic State was still strong enough to send such a big army. Conquests under Abu Bakr's rule. As Abu Bakr radiyallahu anhu was finished with the apostates in Arabia and brought them back to Islam, he directed his intentions to deter the Romans and Persians who already had bad intentions against the Islamic State. Both powers were creating trouble on the borders of the Muslim State. They had played a definite role in making other tribes revolt against the new government. Conquest of Iraq Under the leadership of Khalid ibn al-Walid radiallahu anhu, the famous Muslim commander, an army was mobilized to march to Iraq as a help to Muthanna ibn Haritha as Shaybani. Arabs in the southern part of Iraq were badly treated by Persian landlords. Muslims came to this land to save them from the oppression of the Persians. Hormuz, a Persian ruler, informed Khosrow, the Persian emperor, about the advancing army. The Persians mobilized a huge army. Both armies engaged in a fierce battle. To the surprise of the Persians, their leader, Hormuz, was killed on the spot. They immediately began fleeing the battlefield. The Muslim soldiers chased after them in hot pursuit until they reached the Euphrates River. Several other battles took place before the Muslims conquered all of Iraq. They followed the orders of their caliph to be merciful to the people of Iraq. This way of treatment made most people of Iraq and Median embrace Islam. Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu felt that all such victories were due to Allah's help and not to his or his soldiers' power. He thanked Allah for his favor upon the Muslims, allowing them to gain control over one of the two major empires of the time. Expedition to Syria While the Muslims were fighting in Iraq, other armies were directed to the north to conquer the lands inhabited by Arabs in the southern parts of Syria and Palestine. The main objective behind such expeditions was self-defense. The Caliph wanted to strengthen his borders in order to prevent any attack from the side of the Romans. The Romans had already supported the apostates and were not happy to see the rebels fall one after the other. Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu mobilized a good army 
divided into four parts and appointed four commanders. He gave the army a farewell and advised the soldiers to always be just to people whom they conquer and to be sincere in their pledges. He was sure that the army would come back with victory. He remembered when the Prophet ﷺ prayed to Allah at Badr for the small force of the Muslims to be victorious. Some of those men who fought at Badr joined this army to Syria. Each faction of the army took a separate route to Syria. All factions met at a place called Al-Yarmouk. The leader, Abu Ubaidah ibn al-Jarrah radiallahu anhu, saw how they were outnumbered by the Romans. He discussed the matter with his chiefs. They all agreed to inform Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu of the conditions. Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu ordered Khalid ibn al-Walid radiallahu anhu to leave the Iraqi front and speed up to Al-Yarmouk. All commanders joined hands under the leadership of Khalid. They fought a big battle and defeated the Romans once and for all. The virtues of Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu be merciful. Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu was known to be a very tender-hearted man. He was very merciful to others, even enemies. He showered love on all community members. He did not show favor to one over others. Surely he loved his children, but the cause of Islam was dearer to him. The Liberator from the first day he accepted Islam, Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu put all his resources under the service of the new religion. He bought the slaves who accepted Islam and freed them. He was charitable to all members of the society. Full Dedication and Sacrifice when the Prophet ﷺ instructed his companions to prepare for the Tabuk expedition, he urged them to donate as much as they could out of their property. Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu brought everything he had to the Prophet ﷺ. The Prophet ﷺ asked him how much he left for his family. He replied that he left them the satisfaction of Allah and his Prophet. No one among the companions of the Prophet ﷺ excelled Abu Bakr in terms of support of Islam. He usually gave the larger portion of his money for the cause of Islam. Rule is a responsibility. Assuming rule did not change the man. Immediately after taking over, he left his house to the market to sell some clothes for his living. Omar radiallahu anhu saw him doing so. He immediately took him to the public treasurer and set him an annual salary to cover his needs. It is reported that his wife asked him once to increase his share of sugar because she wanted to make some pudding. He told her that he could not do so. Therefore, she tried to save some quantity out of the monthly lot to fulfill her desire. When she had fulfilled that desire, she brought him the pudding. He immediately told the treasurer that his lot of sugar should be reduced because the quantity spared was not needed. Collection of the Noble Qur'an As a result of wars waged against the apostates, many prominent companions of the Prophet wasallam were killed. Among these people, there were several persons who had memorized the Noble Qur'an. Umar radiallahu anhu feared that the text of the Qur'an would be lost if such deaths continued.